Now, something unfortunate happens when we try to take the square root of just any old number. So far, we've seen numbers with nice square roots. The square root of 9 is 3, because 3 squared is 9. The square root of 49 is 7, because 7 squared is 49. On the calculator, we even found the square root of 289 is 17. Presumably that's because 17 squared is 289. Let's make sure that really works. 17 squared means 17 times 17. That really is 289. But what if we have something that is not one of these so-called perfect squares? The perfect squares are just the numbers that we get by squaring integers. So 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and so on. But you'll notice as this list goes on, these numbers just get further and further apart. What about all the numbers in between? What about the square root of 2? Well, you'll notice the bigger the number, the bigger the square root. So the square root of 2 must be a number that's between 1 and 2. That's the only possibility, right? It has to be in between here. Now, we know a lot of numbers between 1 and 2. And so far, they're all fractions. Could the square root of 2 be a fraction? It turns out that the square root of 2 could not be a fraction. And I'm not just going to tell you that. It's not just that I can't think of a fraction that we can write it as. It's that we can show that no fraction is the square root of 2. Let me show you how. Suppose that we write the square root of 2 as a fraction. Suppose we write that fraction some whole number p over some whole number q, and we write it in lowest terms so that those whole numbers have no common factors. To say that the square root of 2 equals p over q, though, means to say that p over q squared is 2. Notice that I didn't make any kind of weird move like squaring both sides of an equation here. I just looked at what does the square root mean. To say that the square root of 2 is this number means precisely that if I take this number and square it, I get 2. Okay, what happens when I square p over q? What happens when I square a fraction? Right, that'll be p over q times another copy of p over q. I multiply the numerators, that'll be p times p over the denominator, that'll be q times q. So p times p over q times q equals 2. I'm going to multiply both sides of this by q times q. And what I get then, the q's cancel out, p times p equals 2 times q times q. If these two are the same numbers, they must have the same prime factorization. Because remember, we know that any number can factor into primes in just one way. But now we have, okay, p times p. If I make a factor tree for that, obviously it has p and p as its factors. And then coming down from those, we have the factors of p and the factors of p again. On the other hand, my 2 times q times q, if I make a factor tree, I have 2 and q times q. I'll break that up as a q and another q. And then we have the factors of q and the factors of q again. 
The key thing to notice is, over here, we have a 2 among the factors, which means there must be a 2 among the factors over here. The only place that the 2 could be, it must be one of the factors of p. At some point when we're factoring p, we must get 2 times some other stuff. But if 2 is a factor of this p, it must also be a factor of this p. It turns out that 2 has to turn up twice. But we only have one 2 among the factors of 2 times q times q so far. There must be another one. There must be one among the factors of q. I could keep going this way, but I already have what I need. There has to be a 2 among the factors of p and also among the factors of q. That is, 2 is a common factor of p and of q. But we assumed that p over q was written in lowest terms, so p and q didn't have any factors in common. So this can't possibly be the case. It must be that we can't possibly write the square root of 2 as any fraction, which means the square root of 2 is a whole new kind of number, a number that cannot possibly be written as a fraction. Remember the sets of numbers that we have so far. We have the whole numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. We have the integers. Those are the whole numbers and their negatives. So extending all the way off to the left, but then negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on, extending off to the right. And then we have the rational numbers. Those are the numbers that can be written numerator over denominator, where the numerator and denominator are integers, and the denominator is not zero. Those are all of the numbers that can be written as fractions. And that included certain decimals. We'll see more about that in the next video. But now we have a whole new family of numbers. They're the numbers that cannot possibly be written as fractions. So far, the example we have is square root of 2. And by basically the same argument we just gave for 2, for any whole number, either it's a perfect square and its square root is a whole number, like the way that the square root of 36 is 6, or the square root of n is irrational.